What is up everybody? It is Wick here and I got another video where I'm going to show you some things you can look for out in the wild at garage sales, thrift stores, buy them, sell them, make some money. And I did some videos like this previously, got like what, three or four now. If you didn't see those, go check them out. But a lot of people have been sending me messages. They've been finding some of this stuff, making some good money. Even I found something I had in a video, the Fire King mugs. I found a thousand dollars worth at a rummage sale like a week after I put out the video. So yes, it is possible to find this stuff. If you have found any of it, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear about it. Also, if you wanna keep seeing videos like this, make sure to hit that like button subscribe you know share the video do all that kind of stuff leave me a comment as promised before if the video does well enough i'll i'll keep making them so the first item i'm going to show you today are these vintage computer monitors crt monitors some of these are going for big money people want them because they use them for retro video games they want the authentic experience and yes retro games do look better on a crt monitor because what they were made for uh, or the old TVs, monitors, stuff like that. Now here's some Holy Grail monitor, 27 inch CRT, $3,200. Maybe it sold for that, maybe it didn't. Keep in mind a lot of these comps, maybe they sold, maybe they didn't. This is showing what's supposedly sold. The point is they're worth enough money that you can usually pick these up for next to nothing if not free. People are begging to give this kind of stuff away. Actually out in my shed, I probably have four or five CRT monitors from you know, when I had them back in the 90s, when I moved into this house, you know, 20 years ago, I they just ended up out there. I don't know if I have anything good. I know I have some ViewSonics and there's a ViewSonic that sold for $600. So I'm gonna have to get out there. They're probably ruined though. I mean, they've probably got wet, damp, mold, all that kind of stuff. It's hard to imagine 20 years ago that some of this stuff would become valuable like this. So I don't know what this NEC multi-sync, what makes it a holy grail and, and supposedly selling for that much, but certainly worth looking out for. You got some Dell monitor here, uh, 649. This one's brand new. Here's another Dell. The flat screen ones usually do well. You know, 499, 499. And I'm sure most people, at least my age they remember having this stuff here's an old apple monitor maybe you still got it somewhere some old monitors uh some old computer stuff like this you can see people are saying great for vintage gaming retro gaming uh, a lot of them will even show uh, a game being played on them in the screenshot at least with the tvs because again the the crt the tube tvs certain ones are also big money if you watch my channel you know i picked up a brand new inbox tv vcr combo uh, for a dollar at a rummage sale, sold that for like 375, sold very quick. And these things keep going up. Uh, I would probably sell that, that was about two years ago, right? I would probably price that at least $100, $150 higher than what I sold it at before. And what's crazy is I can think back like eight years ago even, uh, maybe less, you go into like a Goodwill and the bottom shelf would just be filled with all kinds of old CRT uh, TVs. And eventually they said, we, we don't accept these anymore. You can't donate them. And most thrift stores, they don't take them. Even rummage sales won't take this stuff. So they're kind of tricky to find. And I remember, I'm pretty sure I mentioned in a video, I said, I bet these TVs will go up in value because gamers are going to want them. If I had the space, I would buy and take every single one. They're always sitting out, you know, by the trash, store them in a barn, you know, get a few hundred or just wait until you're selling them for 500 it would have been great profit of course that's a pretty big commitment because these things are big and heavy but you have to remember shipping these you have to protect them very well I suggest looking up some videos on how to ship something like this to protect it you can see some people uh well, while some shipping costs are getting to around $176, uh, even more than some of the TVs. Of course, it depends on you know where they're coming from as well. But even if you just keep scrolling down, because these are sorted by highest uh, to lowest, you can see they're still well over $100. Here's an NC multi-sync monitor uh, that sold for $203. And I remember when I first moved into this house, a friend of mine would come over, we'd do lands, play video games. He would carry his 21 inch CRT over and these things, you know, weigh a ton. It'd be hot upstairs, it'd be in the summer and you know, we'd just be gaming. I wonder if he still has that. Um, <laughs> maybe I could, could buy that from him, probably not. Like I said, most people just got rid of these things because it's just so much easier to have a thin, small LCD monitor. But here, if you look at some of the, the vintage TVs as well, you got retro gaming. They're showing Super Mario World, 738. Look at that classic TV, 500. Uh, some of the wood grain ones do well. And I got a couple I picked up recently, smaller ones, which I like finding the smaller ones. And it's kind of rough because if I do come across some of these larger uh, Sony Trinitrons, 27 inch, it's gonna be hard not to buy them 
or take them because they're more than likely can maybe get them for free but i really don't want to ship them maybe i'll just try to sell them locally or something like that look at this cool batman <laughs> TV, DC Comics, Batman 450. Of course, there's Pokemon, SpongeBob TVs, all that kind of stuff. And here's a sharp uh, 27 inch. I think that I think I had a sharp 27 inch in my bedroom. Uh, so that could easily have been a well, when I was a, a kid, I had it had it in my bedroom. Not anymore, unfortunately. But yeah, they go all the way down to like nine inch. There's a nine inch right there. Uh, nine inch CRT TV. A lot of people have these in their kitchen. And people really like the small ones for whatever reason. Unfortunately, I had to pass up on some broken ones uh, at a sale recently. Sansui, but yeah, really cool stuff. You just wouldn't think this stuff is valuable. And the sell-through rate's really good. This stuff is definitely selling. Next, I'm gonna talk about some vintage door chimes. And this is the kind of stuff, again, you really wouldn't think is worth that much money. And some of it is, some of it isn't. Usually, uh, if they're vintage enough, people want them to replace in old homes. They wanna keep that authenticity, original feel. So here's one of 450 Newtone. Newtone makes a lot of the old ones. Uh, I've noticed, I actually picked up a really nice Newtone um item which i don't think the video is out for that uh recently so maybe i'll just wait and have that as a surprise in a thrifting video here's one for 298 259 for this one 258 now my house was built in 1903 and i have a pretty old door chime doorbell system i was looking at it and i'm like i should just pull this off the wall and sell it but now nah, i'm not going to do that but probably could get a couple hundred dollars for it even here's some uh still new in the package and it doesn't have to be super old like you can still find decent door chimes that are you know from the 90s still selling for 50 bucks right um here's some doorbell light cover more for 150 160, 125 plus shipping. So this stuff will definitely sell if you can find it. And this, you can find this stuff at the, like the thrift store, uh, home improvement places like Restores or whatever, Habitat for Humanity. Probably have to pay a fortune for it though because they price everything high, but still it's really cool to uh, come across stuff like this at a garage sale and just be like, hey, I can make a couple hundred bucks on this. Oh, I also wanna mention the doorbell covers or just the doorbells themselves. You know, not huge money, a lot of them, but again, this is something you can find pretty much everywhere, uh, certain styles. And if you're picking these up for like a quarter or a dollar, hey, why not pick them up, sell them for 40, 50 bucks, 25 bucks. Uh, it's just extra money in your pocket. Here are some vintage hammers. Now, just like most things, every category has valuable items you should look out for. Hammers, you see everywhere. Almost every garage sale has a hammer. Uh, the thing you need to know about them, you need to look for brands on the hammer, look them up, they need to be old good condition hammers people collect them they want them in good condition because hammers well they get used they get beat up so if you can find an old good one in good condition like here's a set of these snap-on these are auto body hammers it looks like now i don't i can't just look at a hammer and know if it's a blacksmithing hammer a gunsmith hammer a masonry hammer kind of i guess but certain hammers people that do blacksmithing and stuff like that they want to use the original authentic stuff so they will pay for that 310 for those three hammers. Here's a, a true temper, uh, 289 for this hammer. I picked up some hammers recently at Goodwill too. I don't know if the video's out yet, uh, but they're nothing super special. Here's a heart hammer, 207, even Craftsman. Like you can find some good, in good condition, Craftsman hammers. And you know you can sell them for 70 bucks. Hatchets even, like look at that. that's a nice looking hatchet for 210. Fencing tool hammers. And again, they don't all have to be $150 plus hammers. Like even if you're finding a good hammer for a dollar selling it for 20 25 dollars that's pretty good right sledgehammers even some of the heads here axe heads here's a ball peen cross straight blacksmith hammer 155 dollars and most people can tell quality right you pick up something you're like oh this is made well this is nice you know it doesn't feel cheap and generic so that's another indicator if you pick up something see a name on it you can even google lens hammers usually and get a pretty good idea if they're worth anything here's a fiberglass plum hammer which i believe that's the hammer i got recently was a plum and the ones I got are not in that great a condition, but they were like two to three dollars a piece. So I just went in and picked them up. Uh, I think I'll make a little bit of money on them. More framing hammers. And the, yeah, they have a pretty good sell through rate hammers, especially the good ones. So I'm looking forward to finding some really nice hammers in the future. Here is some more kind of tools, uh, planes, woodworking tools. Now I have sold some of these before. Uh, I think I sold one for about 150 
Actually at Salvation Army a few years ago, I picked up a lot of these vintage ones. I haven't even got them all listed. They're in the death pile, unfortunately, but some of the ones I got were even from, uh, I believe late 1800s. And the ones I've sold anywhere from $40, I think to 150. Some of the ones I have to list, I think are gonna sell for, you know, upwards to 200, maybe 300. Again, people collect these, people also use them. They want to use the old stuff. People are collecting them. They definitely want in, you know, good condition. I'm assuming the people using them also want decent enough condition, but you'll see a lot of the Stanley ones are valuable. They say number 602. They'll have a number on them. Uh, they're usually smooth or like wavy on the bottom. You can kind of figure them out through there. Uh, the wood matters and there's a really good website unfortunately i don't know it right off where you could go to it and they'd have all these all this information so you could figure out what type of plane you had and i think finding this kind of stuff is really cool and really fun uh, because it's old it's vintage it has history here's a woodworking plane 350 and you can take them apart i think that's one reason i haven't got to listing them all is because it's a pretty big job to take them apart clean them and uh, just go through all that trying to figure out which ones they are. I'm just going to have to spend like a few days and do that because it's probably about a thousand dollars in planes I got at Salvation Army that day. Uh, I forget what I paid for them, like five to ten dollars I think. But you can see some of the larger ones here. Stanley Bailey. Now if I remember correctly, Stanley Bailey was before Stanley and then it became just the Stanley Company. Uh, but it uh, started in the late 1800s, so um, yeah, definitely old, cool stuff here. And of course, they go all the way down to the $50 range, so even if you're finding a not as good one, not as old, if the name brand's good, it's in good condition, you'll make money. Frisbees! And um, I was digging in a tote at a garage sale this morning, because there's Frisbees in there. And that's what gave me the idea for this. I'm like, well, I know there's some good Frisbees out there, so let's talk about what to look for. And a lot of the more valuable ones are gonna be like some Frisbee golf, disc golf, kind of professional ones. And then you also got the vintage Whammo Frisbees here. Flying Saucer Frisbee, uh, more fl Flying Saucer. Here's a Batman one, uh, just in the package. Looks like it's sold on best offer. Here's a disc golf one, 100 bucks. Uh, set of four and a lot of these frisbees too they will sell for 20 30 dollars um, if they're disc golf you know professional ones 80 dollars here's the midnight flyers again it's not something that's going to make you a millionaire right but how much do you think you're going to pay for an old frisbee at a garage sale you're probably paying like anywhere from a quarter to you know if the people are just trying to get as much money for possible two dollars and you sell it for you know 40 50 60 maybe you get one that's worth 100 200 dollars one of the best things you can do is pick up things that people don't know is valuable things like frisbees old hammers most people who have a garage sale they have gold or silver or something like that they know is valuable diamonds you know they're going to price that stuff appropriately they're just not going to to give it away but a lot of people don't know about frisbees or even like the fire king i had in the video so that's when you can really start making money is when you start picking up stuff like this because everyone else is looking for jewelry gold collectibles and that kind of thing so let's talk about some clothing Here's some of these Dixon Flannel Company flannels, flannel shirts, and these things are pretty big money. And I think they're good to look for because a lot of people don't know the value. And if they bought them, if it's like a garage sale, they probably know because you know they, they bought them, but at like a rummage sale or something, they're just gonna price these like a quarter with all the other flannel shirts. They look, look like just any flannel shirt, but you can see some of the comps on these 420, 400. Here's one of 38 bids, 405. They're very easy to miss. That's for sure. I think I've found one in the 10 years I've been, you know, reselling. I also don't look, you know, in clothing that closely. I do look at flannels. I look for wool, like the Pendleton wool stuff. So uh, one day, maybe I'll find a bunch of them. Somebody will donate somewhere, a Goodwill or a place like that. You know, Goodwill's just gonna put these on the rack more than likely, uh, depending on who's working, how much knowledge they have for, you know, just the same price as all the other shirts. Same with Salvation Armies or places like that. And even if you're finding more basic shirts, they're still, you know, 50 to 100 bucks usually if you find them. I don't know what makes certain ones more special or anything like that. Obviously, the new ones here that you're seeing for 230, uh, 210. Uh, probably should have sorted these by pre-owned just to get a better idea. So if you look at some of the ones pre-owned, again, it's, it's still high, high dollar amounts. So let me know in the comments if you've ever picked up any of these Dixon flannels, if you knew about them. I think a lot of people 
could find these and make some good money. They have a good sell-through rate as well. There's also this brand, Arcteryx, is a brand a lot of people don't know about. Um, surprisingly enough, it's a very kind of high-end, kind of a North Face or Columbia brand that some of the stuff's priced high, you can see here. Uh, of course, some of these are probably priced too high. $1,000, 950 900 But if we jump down here, um, I think a lot of like jackets you find will be in the $250, $300 range on average. The only thing I've ever come across are a pair of shorts, and I think they're like $75 pair of shorts. And uh, I think technically my nephew found those and uh, ended up keeping them uh, for himself. I was a little bit jealous because I wanted them. Uh, but I think that's all I've ever come across. They have like a little, was it, iguana or a lizard as a logo. And here's a nice one. This Firebee Parka 570 with 32 bids. I'm sure that one is pretty accurate. Usually when you see the bids, like multiple bids like that, it's a pretty good indication that the price is right. When you see, see one bid, you see two uh, of the exact same picture, and, you know, it might not have sold for 550, but I'm always on the hunt for this stuff. So I have to mention this. I don't think I've ever had this in one of these styles of videos before. I know I've mentioned it on the channel and that's these vintage saxa booms they're just a toy like saxophone that makes different types of sounds and um it's on my bucket list because years ago i had it in a video i was you know recording myself at goodwill looking at the shelves there's one on the shelf i didn't see it i didn't know what it was someone pointed it out in the comments that they're valuable i looked it up and at the time they were selling for you know 200 250 maybe $300 in good condition. So I was like, oh, no, I can't believe I, I didn't even, you know, think to look that up. It just looked like a, a cheap toy, right? But since then, Jack Black, the actor, the, the dude that has the Tenacious D band, used one of these. It went, kind of went viral and it drove the price up. So now they're selling for, you know, eight dollars $900. Actually, these ones that are new here, kind of surprising that they only sold for like $950 to me anyway, because a lot of these pre-owned are, are still selling for around seven eight hundred dollars you know sell through rate is good uh there's some people trying to get probably way way too much for them just because you know they're trying to collect the hype but i think this is something that's definitely going to stay in the six to seven hundred dollar range for a long time and you know people that don't know about these are walking past them at garage sales having no idea you know that they're worth hundreds of dollars again let me know in the comments if you've ever found one of these i'm just curious how many people are finding them and this is one of those things is you can't really saturate the market right there's just not enough of them out there to fulfill the demand so the hunt will continue until i find one of these and i can scratch it off my bucket list but there it is everybody that's the video i hope you learned something today i hope you enjoyed it again don't forget to hit that like button for me on the way out i'd really appreciate it and don't forget if you find any of this stuff you have to send me 10 percent of your profits i'm kidding of course but you can find me on twitter instagram tiktok flipping underscore junk and this has been wick until next time